So, Rez, do you believe in that type of thing that people could sell their soul? I believe people have done it and 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 do it, but I don't believe um I don't you know I don't I don't I, I wouldn't condone it. I, I couldn't do it because no, money is not worth it to me. Yeah. You know, I used to tell people all the time when I was a police officer, I didn't make as much money as I did when I was running death row and had my security company and all of that. But do you know I was a happier person, in my opinion? I had more stuff, in my opinion, and, and more and better credit. And so my <laughs> point to be is that if you learn to adjust to, to what you have. And when you start getting more, like that song was, more money, more problems. Yeah, he got that one right for motherfucking show. Okay, Damn. listen. So still accuse a record exec out of Compton of selling his soul. Right. Well, and and, and I, I wouldn't sold the soul. I said he was a devil worshiper. It's a big difference. That's the same thing. Well, I knew it ain't TDE because he loved Top Dog. And that's all he ever talked about Top Dog. And Ty from Watts. And he I was talking about he was talking about easy. Oh. Right. But I don't want to get into that. We're gonna hold that for another day. We ain't okay. no easy slander, no Compton legend slanders. Well, it wouldn't be so, slander. So what I'm asking, right, is you know, a lot of people told me that coming into the business. That Suge sold his soul. A lot of people told me that, and I didn't really believe it. I believe anytime a black man is successful, brothers from where we come from, they have to figure out why they're not successful. So on other people, they start putting bullshit beliefs. Do you think at any mean being around Suge, you fuck with him more than everybody, that he was like, he sold his soul or was evil? I believe Suge was the most generous person I ever met in my life. That's my opinion. That's unbelievable. But, but when he turned on you, he turned on you. And a lot of these people, if you've watched these recent re interviews been done, Jewel and all of them. I've seen that. Are, Danny Boy and all of them. These are people who have never put out an album on death row. But they're talking about $250,000 surgeries. They're talking about monthlies. They're talking about um, all this money that was being spent on them. And how they were living and, and looking and stuff and never put out an album on Death Row. And all these people want to badmouth him now, but he was taking care of, he, of a lot of people. People just got mad when he cut you off and where he mm. messed up at. And I admit he messed up by not having a royalty department. But in my opinion and for what I know, and once everybody sit down and do the accounting and stuff, man, you will find out that this man overpaid all of his artists. I, I believe that. that. I believe I really that. I believe that. If you just look, you have been in the game, Glasses. Yeah. You know what a, a, an album, people don't tell what an album really generates you. Man. If you're a multi-million dollar artist like Pac and, and Snoop were, if they were getting a dollar a record back then, a they dollar a record. They wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't recoup. So that's five million, ten million dollars. Yeah, you you done learned on all type of expenses and stuff like that within that period of time that the brothers done got. I mean, Snoop had a four and a half million dollar legal fee and a judgment that was paid out before he even put an album out on there from. And I'm glad you told me that. I'm glad you said that because when I talked to him, one of the coolest things about Suge, um, when I first met him, how I met him was, um, I had met Ron and Don first, right? Ron and Don worked with my engineer Guido, and um. So they talked to me about him and they always talk, spoke highly like he was a good dude. Um, I had wrote my first single was a song called Certified with Akon. Okay. And like, you know, like I was super gutter, like straight gang member wise. I really didn't give a fuck. And I was out there with it. And it was a line in the song where I say, um, I'm laughing at these rap niggas running from Suge. Right. So I remember like it was more of me of a stab to niggas that was acting like they were street niggas. But it was a nigga that was pumping that much fear in their heart, right? So I just presented myself in a way that, like, is no nigga going to pump no fear. The nigga who is the most scariest nigga, that's how I went about rapping. You know what I mean? Let niggas know right off the rip. So a couple of my homies was like, yeah, man, should have heard that line, some so forth, so forth. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't tripping. Like, Suge is solid. Like, and at that time, you know, I, I knew so many niggas from the mob. Like, I, I used to go over there all the time. Mikey Rule is my boy. Zabo, rest in peace. Couple niggas is my guys. Term, Rob. Couple niggas, right? So yeah. I really didn't have no issue. 
I went to the House of Blues and performed it. And um, he was there because he was on the second floor. Feel me standing up. That right? The foundation room. right. So I'm busting the shit. I'm going crazy. Um, I'm with tip. I'm opening for tip. And uh, I'm rapping it and I seen. So, you know, you know how they make us where we from. Right? They make us this way. Like, oh, let me triple that up. Let me really put it there so niggas know. Yeah. So I'm laughing at these rap niggas running for sure. Suge stood up, put his arms out, and the whole crowd looked back at him. And I'm going. I'm just talking crazy. I'm just rapping my rap. So when I get off the stage, he come through the back. We introduce each other. You know, obviously, Suge, nice. I size him up. I'm like, oh, nigga, this is we'll be cold squabble. Nigga, this is a fair one. You know, but it wasn't that type of energy. It was like more I could tell he was proud that like a nigga that he could, that he knew was something Got close, got close enough to get into the business. So now it was nothing but. Classes, like this is in two thousand seven. Now it's two thousand seven eight. Okay. Oh, later. It is late. Now you got a different sugar. Let me be honest. Two thousand sugar. Two thousand seven was not nineteen ninety five sugar. Yeah, yeah got definitely. Two different sugar nights. Yeah. One had money and power. The other one had a little bit of power, no money, but. He had different crew running with him. No, I see that. 94, yeah, he had the boys. He had niggas that would would would. Yeah, would, he had the boys somewhere in the desert, buried you and raped you. Yeah, yeah, he had some boys. He had some boys. Two thousand seven, he was running with Denver Lanes. Not saying that they were any different or anything, but they wasn't as loyal to him because they from a different neighborhood. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I knew the, I knew the, I knew the niggas he was running with from Lanes. Them was some of my boys too. But long story short. It was never like the line wasn't ever a disrespectful line about shit. Yeah. So to me, like when he embraced me, he actually is the first legend from the coast to me to truly embrace me. Like, man, you know, like I, his energy was like, man, welcome to the business. Don't let these niggas play you because they're going to try to play you. So we start building from that point on. You know, we built a great relationship. And one of the things I talked to him about and asked him about was Snoop. I was like, man, what's the whole thing with the money? And he started explaining to me how much he spent in getting him out of prison. And when keeping he explained it, to prison. keeping him from going, from going yeah, yeah, from get, that's what I said, from, from, from getting, you know, he'd have been in prison. I mean, it's, it was a simple case. So he'd still be sitting between somebody's legs right yeah, now. So, exactly. So <laughs> not why. <well>. No, nigga. <laughs> no. <laughs> I hope not. Don't do that. That's not, no, he wouldn't. Long story short. I thought that was ill. He told me the story. You and I was know like, how niggas get their hair braided in prison? No, no, I don't even want to know. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to find out. I wouldn't get my <laughs> hair braided. So I've been a killer nigga talking about braiding my hair. Nigga, <laughs> braid my hair, and I'm finna kill you. But anyway, he told me the story, and I knew the number he was talking about is real because I watched certain homies that I knew fight cases. And I'm like, exactly. damn. So it's millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. He told me some crazy shit. Like, I ain't trying to throw his shit out there, but, you know, he spent some money. I knew he spent some real money because they had to come to him for it. They knew he had it, so they going to come to him for it. Do you know the attorneys that he had? He, it was four of the homies, four of the people that got arrested on Snoop case. Snoop. The bodyguard. Yeah. The bodyguard. Uh, 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 Sean Dog. Uh, one other one. It was four of them. I don't know if it was Lil C style or it was four of them. Two of them eventually got their case dismissed. My point was these attorneys was David Chesnoff. David Chesnoff is the guy that's representing the, uh, the football player in Vegas right now. Wow. He was also the guy that represented uh, Dirk. Uh, the guy, you know, the, the old man that just got got a, uh, convicted for uh, molesting you know, women or kill, no killing his, his friend um, about, you know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to tell you how powerful of an attorney. Oh, I, know, I know you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. about. Yeah. Don Ray, powerful attorney from San Diego area. Johnny Cochran and David Kennedy. Those were the four attorneys. Jesus Christ. On, on their case. He had an OJ dream team. Exactly. This, this is who had it, you know, who he had on this case to represent him. And my point to all of that has been this the, the, amount of, the amount of money that they put out for attorneys for him. The amount of, and, and that's why Snoop don't really. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the yeah. separation and agreement that sold. And people don't like when I use the word sold, so I'll say assigned. Sure. As a as an artist, I get it. 
signed his rights mm. to um you sold him to, to, to pee. P. Sure. Well, actually, it was priority records, to be honest. Everybody, oh, yeah, yeah. P. Well, because two, because priority because because Mac was gonna get him at first. I know Mac, Mac was trying to make money. a move. Mac, and it ain't never we wasn't gonna sell him to Mac. We turned oh. down Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons came up there with more money, not Russell Simmons, Leor Coin. Came up there with more money, rolled up to the prison with me about three or four times to try to get it. He offered eight million dollars because he was in business with Columbia. Should have told him 13 million, but he came back and said, Hey, all I can get you is because Columbia don't want to give up that much. It's eight million dollars. He told him no. He has signed the rights to priority for a seven percent override and four and a half million dollars. And gave Snoop, gave Snoop a million dollars to sign the contract. To leave Death Row, saying that that he don't owe anything, it, no, he have no more claims or anything from Death Row on. Any other money that was generated from there was done through E1, and E1 was supposed to pay him. Mm. You know, and I'm talking about that's once we took the catalog from Interscope and took it over to Death Row. I mean, mm. took it over to Interscope. To e, yeah, that yeah, yeah. was done. That was to the last E1. deal I did in 2001. Yeah. So Snoop is not owed any money by Suge Knight. No, but I don't think Snoop even lies. And say, well, I don't think he hey, actually says that. I don't get that from him. Who's here to fight him or say anything? Who's here that's going to do it? He done changed the narrative on everything. I done tried to expose him on telling the lie of, about, and now I try to help with it, telling um about the story with Pop. I done, Snoop done told so many different versions on so many different things where I don't know what his agenda is, but he's trying to do a movie, and he want to tell the movie his way. Supposed yeah. to. You got you got to tell your own narrative, right? You got to make your own story. You ain't got to lie about it, though. Hell, everybody is going to lie about it. Ain't nobody is going to tell the truth. Because you got to get enough story without lying. No, Snoop no, is, no, it wouldn't be. Snoop is if, still if, one of my favorite artists. He got enough. Sure, he's, enough. he's the greatest hip-hop artist ever. No question. But everybody wants to make their narrative better than it is. Correct. But, but to me. That's true. Like, That's to be true. honest, though. got to change the narrative. You know, when I talk to like he ain't never seen a check. How how would Mac how could Mac Ten even think about giving him a, a a song saying fuck their throat? Man, we would have loved for that to happen. We would have pulled that ship off the shelf as soon as it happened. <laughs> because number one, we was with priority still, and number two, how are they gonna do that? We wasn't gonna sign Snoop rights to Mac Ten. So what, what made what so so what made Shug want to give it to P out of anybody then? He didn't care. He was wanted to give it to Brian at priority, but Mac can I ask a question? Could he, I think his total deal was only like seven million dollars, and we know he was out there spending all that money on T Bar, so you know he didn't have, <laughs> have the money. Hold up, man! My boy ain't spending no money on T Bar. Don't my he boy ain't no doing that. all that. Y'all know Mac <laughs> was out there hanging in the land. See, I know the real. People don't like to hear Reggie talk because Reggie know what about everybody. Man, you this try is like ninety five, right? Ninety four, ninety five. My wife Kenya. I, I mean, I know everybody business because I was in this business back then. So they can't. That's why they hate for me to talk. That's why it's easier to call me the police. That's the police. Okay, <laughs> but the police was running shit. He was around doing stuff back then. To from ninety six to two thousand two, two thousand three. On the West Coast, there wasn't nobody. In the know better than me because everybody was coming to death row and I was running. The sugar was in jail. Mm. 